Welcome back to the channel guys doing a little mic check. How do I sound? So jujitsu is fun It's a great way to stay in shape to increase how resilient you are by challenging yourself and also a great outlet for channeling your competitive side These are some of the reasons why almost 3 million people have taken up this sport as a hobby But we all have to start somewhere I remember my first class getting submitted five times in one round by somebody that I outweighed by 40 pounds I remember my drive home from class that night, super defeated, but I knew I was hooked. And I've been doing jujitsu ever since. But not everybody's first class or first year of training is the same, which is why in this video we will be going over the 10 white belts that you will bump into at your local gym. Now before we start, I have to say that this video is for laughs. I have been a couple of these characters that we're gonna be going over, so I will be poking just as much fun at myself as I will anybody else. So grab a seat, relax, and let's get right into this. All right, so the sender. This is the type of person that lives always seeking that next hit of adrenaline. To produce a sender, all you have to do is take a normal person, go into their DNA, find the gene that's responsible for rational fear, and just take that sucker out. Now, in normal people, this gene is what causes fear of lions in the wild, of walking close to the edge of a cliff, or of any Dagestani wrestler whose name happens to have a silent H in it. This is number one, bruh. To get inside the mind of a sender yourself, all you have to do is take any move that you might go for in training and just replace it with flying in front of it. Armbar, flying armbar. Triangle, flying triangle. Single leg, flying single leg. I don't even know what that looks like. Like they could have just learned the basic guillotine from close guard and next thing you know they're trying to hit some flying squirrel snap down to guillotine the front headlock to spin around to the back to twist the roll. But for some reason this sender never really seems to get hurt seriously. They honestly probably bought an upgrade that reduces fall damage to 0%. At the end of the day though the sender with all their trickery motivates you to step up your game so props to them for that. Now the theorist is about as farly separated from the sender as you can get. If the sender's catchphrase is, think less, do more, then the theorist's catchphrase would look something a little like, deeply ponder the implications of the problem you're working on for days on end before you get the opinion of experts which you use to craft dozens of action plans from which you can choose the best one. Only right before you use it, throw it to the side because it's not perfect and go back to the drawing board. Got a newsflash for you. People that do jujitsu, little nerdy. Shouldn't really come as a surprise. I mean, just think about some of the people we look up to. Guys like Ryan Hall, Marcelo Garcia, right? These guys aren't exactly someone like LeBron James. So yeah, a little bit of forethought, a little bit of intuition is very helpful for helping you improve your jujitsu. But the theorist takes this to a whole nother level. Some notable theorists are guys like John Danahar. Add a little bit of THC goodness to that and you get Eddie Bravo. Theorist is a little more of a rare breed. Whole gym's not exactly gonna be filled with dozens of them. However, every gym has about one or two. Honestly, anytime you're struggling with leg locks, they're probably a pretty good person to talk to. Now, if you've done jujitsu for any length of time at all, then you've probably already noticed that it's kind of a dude heavy sport. However, there are some girls that enjoy doing it as well. Now, there are two possibilities for how they got into it. Either they were always kind of into fitness, sports, or martial arts as a kid, and now they're just trying to continue that, or their ex got them into it. Now, you may have been training jujitsu consistently for a year, maybe even two years. Good for you. You're still not gonna get as much attention from the instructor as a girl that's been training jujitsu for two weeks. But you know, it's awesome to have them around. I mean, where else are we supposed to get such S-tier jujitsu content like this, this, or this? Seriously, the jujitsu community could not take the hit of losing its female practitioners. Is there truly anything that pisses off the race of mankind more than this guy? Picture this for a second. You've been grinding on your jujitsu journey for the past year consistently. Your first several months, you did nothing but get smashed by everybody else in the gym. But now you're starting to see a little bit of success. You've managed to get off some sweeps and takedowns on some of the other white belts. When all of a sudden, this new guy shows up and within two weeks of training, he's already submitted some of the blue belts. When you roll with him, he just mops the floor with you and he's even giving some of the purple belts some serious fits. 
Is there anything in life more frustrating than this? Of course not. I mean, why are you doing jujitsu anyways? Is it to stay in shape, learn a little bit of self-defense and improve yourself as a person? Hell no, it's to be the best mofo and have bragging rights over every other person ever. And this guy, this natural, is seriously getting in the way of that. Now your only hope is that since everything's coming to him super easily, that he won't take it seriously and hopefully he'll quit in a couple months. And if he doesn't, then you'll probably see him on the cover of Jiu Jitsu Magazine within a couple years. Now everybody has their own personal fitness routine when it comes to prepping for their jujitsu. If you ask this guy what his is, he'll probably say something like, well I pour concrete for a living, or framing houses, or painting walls. And that's literally all he does outside of jujitsu. But does it ever work? Yes, it does. First of all, he never gets tired. It doesn't really matter how much better than him you are, he will never stop attacking you. Like you could have him in a fully locked up bow and arrow choke, for five minutes and he's probably not gonna tap. If he does, he's gonna get right back on top after you've burned out your grips and can barely fight back and he's just gonna keep bulldozing forward like a Terminator. So there are a few things that you never wanna do with this person. You never wanna arm wrestle them. You never wanna see who has the stronger handshake. And by God, you never want them to grab your collar. That's an automatic game over. But for as much as they test your heart and make you question whether or not you should actually be doing jujitsu, rolling with them is a great way of bringing yourself back to the realization that sometimes in jujitsu you can't technique your way out of it, you just gotta bulldoze through and don't be a pansy about it. After all, while you're watching this video, they're probably out smashing some cinder blocks or something, just like you should smash the like button on this video. Alright, so it's time to talk about a serious topic cancer. Now, I've looked up the definition, a practice or phenomenon of perceived evil or destruction that is hard to contain or eradicate. So there's this breed of person walking around out there doing their thing. They're watching the latest episode of UFC Contender or UFC Embedded. They watch a couple episodes of that and all of a sudden they think that they're gonna be the next Conor McGregor. They're just gonna waltz into the UFC, tell Dana what's up, and walk out with a bag. They are a cancer. And I'll tell you one thing more. I used to be one of them. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine. There was a time that I wanted to be the next big fighter in the UFC with that beautiful bit of gold wrapped around my waist. I was following all the top fighters, John Jones, Georges St. Pierre. I am not impressed with your performance. You're still drunk right now? I thought I knew everything and all I needed was a little bit of groundwork. Boy, was I... Wrong. But yeah, I'm kind of glad that I wanted to do all those things back then because it actually got me to start training and I was able to discover just how fun and awesome doing jujitsu can be. These uh, UFC fanboys, kind of easy to meme. But you know, we all got to start somewhere. As long as you don't stick with the same mindset for years and years and you're actually willing to put in the work. Props to you, boy. They say you can't teach an old dog new tricks. I for one disagree with this. It just takes a little more time and you just have to pause every two minutes for them to catch their breath. Now I've personally trained with a lot of white belts that are just starting out in their late 30s or early 40s and while their cardio may not be the best, boy do they have that old man strength. Now I don't know what these people do when they get up in the morning but I'm willing to guess that instead of coffee they probably gulp down a cup of nails, take a bath in a tub full of razor blades, they probably even shave their beard with a bowie knife. While it may take them 20 minutes to properly warm up their body so they don't tear any muscles or ligaments, I feel like the old timer is somebody that you really have to give their due props for just stepping on the mats and trying something new at their age. I mean, with all the damage that I've put my body through, I for one hope that I'm at least halfway as active as they are at their age. Now contrary to popular opinion, the stoner actually comes in all shapes and sizes. I can't even believe that you can't grow this. If you were to profile one of these guys, you'd probably say something along the lines of, well, they train at 10th planet, they probably think the earth is flat, and they definitely don't work out. And while this is probably true for some stoners out there, it would probably shock you just how many jujitsu stoners do not fit into this archetype. However, there's one thing that all of them have in common, and that is their obsession with leg locks. Every good jujitsu stoner knows that you gotta work on the legs because the game has evolved and, well, close guard? It just isn't as effective as it used to be. 
In the words of our almighty lord and savior, John Danaher, why would you ignore 50% of the human body? I honestly think they're a great addition to any gym, besides the whole flat earth thing. It's kind of weird. But yeah, they'll probably be the first one to say, what's up, bro, and offer to smoke you out after class is over. Now you may be doing jujitsu because you think it's a fun hobby, it's an effective martial art for self-defense, and I got news for you. You're wrong, pal. Us gym bros, we know better. We know that jujitsu is just a way of doing cardio without having to run. You'll probably see us over there hitting the heavy bag while everybody else is rolling. We love Nogi because we just like to grab a hold of you and squeeze as hard as we can. And contrary to popular opinion, we actually don't mind the gi at all. It's a great form of cardio. But if there's one thing that all of us alpha gym bros avoid like the plague, it is being on our backs. Because we ain't no ah. We're men. We know how to fight like men. Yeah, bro, these jujitsu guys go into their back like that would work in a street fight. Give me a break. I know, bro, so annoying. They just need to shoot up some steroids and get big like us. What you saying, bro? You know I'm natty. But even with all of this that we've talked about, the gym bro does serve a crucial part of every gym. And that purpose is giving you the satisfaction that you've actually beat up somebody that's way bigger than you, making you conclude that your technique must be fire. And for that service, I salute you, all gym bros. Without you, where would all us little guys be? Now, if you've ever rolled with the patient, then you will definitely remember the experience. Whether it's them dislocating their shoulder by basing out, popping their knee out of place while they try to pass your half guard, or dislocating their rib by you just looking at them. It's an experience you won't soon forget because it'll make you feel like a terrible person. Like if the sender never gets hurt, then the patient never has a class that they're at 100%. Like you could tell them to shoot and they'll get turf toe for three months. When they get back from the hospital, you'll tell them to just play guard and they'll end up inverting and hurting their neck. Every time they start seeing progress in the gym, they'll end up scoring some catastrophic injury which will keep them out for six months. You know, I for one think that jujitsu is something that anybody should and can do. But uh, this person, I suppose there are other sports you could do like croquet, uh, golf, maybe knitting. But you know what? As soon as they recover from their injuries, this person is always back on the mats and so props for that. What's up guys? I'm actually making this video on Thanksgiving last week for you guys. Hope you had a great Thanksgiving by the way. Time for me to get to work editing this video. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that. Yay. If you guys appreciate the work that I put into making these videos, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. Ya boy would really appreciate it. And if you guys are new around here, I'm Jedi. I've been doing jujitsu for seven years and I draw from that experience to give you guys quality jujitsu videos every single Friday. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any of my uploads. You can also follow my Instagram link down in the bio. I will talk to each and every one of you in the next video. Remember, stay consistent and you can do anything. All right, bye.